just a beautiful day here in Central Florida. I hope it's the same way where you are. And uh, welcome one and all. If you're a regular viewer, just know you are loved and loved and loved. And um, those first time viewers, the very same. Don't let it be the last. Homekeepers, it's a program where we like to um, really just deal with people and their issues because a home is different than a house. A uh, home, I believe you just talking about the people in it and what they make of uh, those relationships and their surroundings and all. And so uh, we never ever run out of uh, topics or issues. And so I hope that uh, if you haven't watched us regularly that you will because uh, we do give out a lot of good, good information. I have an author with me today. I really enjoy interviewing authors because uh, they have put a lot of work, usually research and everything else into one subject. And so it's a little easier to explore it when someone has done that work for you. Today I have Carol Cook, and you're gonna love this, especially you ladies. Uh, Bathsheba bathed in grace, and it's how eight scandalous women in the Bible uh, changed the world. It's really such an interesting book, and there's one thing I've thought about when we go to heaven. I just wonder if we're going to get all the dots connected and so forth. I, I believe we will, because I can read a story in the Bible, and I put my spin on it, you know and uh, try to think how was that person thinking and all. And so that's what this uh, author today, Carol, has done with this and gone into great detail. And I even read that while she, she uh, typed and created the book, she wore biblical costumes to help her really get into that mindset. I think that is wonderful detail if you're working on a project. So we're going to talk to Carol. And Stephanie and I are going to make something called Pull apart monkey bread. So I have no explanation for that. We'll just have to show it to you. Before I do, though, I have a, another new offer, Bible Facts Made Easy. And this is an amazing little booklet because it will give you Bible facts just like that. And I, I've said on the show so many times when we offer something like that, somebody else has done all the work for you. And all you have to do is look it up. Also in the back, it has a pullout of Bible promises. And sometimes that's all you have to get you through the day is a promise of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it will get you through the day. But it's got Jesus family trees. It's even got plants and birds and things. Uh, just the just basic facts of the Bible right there, put it in your pocket. Uh, now, this is an offer. If you cannot afford it, I'll be glad to send it to you. But if you can, I would certainly appreciate an offering. Uh, this one, it will be necessary to write for it. Uh, our answering service will not have the information on this. So if you would like it, uh, just write to Homekeepers Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida. 33758 and ask for Bible facts made easy and any offering at all you can send along with that will be so very much appreciated and <laughs> Stephanie's over here shooting something. <laughs> ah, looks like one of those um, little biscuit things that are so much fun but you didn't even get to hit it. No, it just I went just boom. It. I didn't want to make too much noise. This is going to be interesting because it actually has some uh, green chilies in it mm -hmm. that give it a little bit of a kick. Mm -hmm. It's pull apart cheese bread is what it's called. Where'd I get the monkey part? Well, because we had, there's a pull apart monkey bread, but that's with cinnamon and cream cheese Aww. and all that. So this You don't expect me to keep that stuff straight. Well, if they ask for pull apart monkey bread, they're not going to get this recipe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's true. This is one of those super easy, super fabulous mm -hmm. recipes that I love. You so it's pull apart cheese bread. Yes, and it's just two cans of biscuits. You cut the bis each biscuit into six pieces. And it's one of those little things that make your meal so much more interesting. Yes. And then you can spray the it's pan a fun if thing. it would be so nice. Okay. I would just spray it a lot because you got cheese and you got... All right. And then... And um, then we're going to put a cup of cheddar cheese. Ooh, we're going to put a cup of um, the Colby and Monterey Colby. Jack. You could use any kind you want, though. Oh, sure. You can do it. 
there's a million different directions you can go with this stuff. It's great. Oh my goodness. Can we get a close up of her fingernail polish? I did that just for you. I made fancy fingernails. Just okay, hold your hand still. Oh, where am I? Right here. Fancy, fancy if that and is girly, just for Arthelene Ripley. This girl <laughs> always is on the cutting edge. So, I'm almost there. And how is your debt reduction doing? She is exhibit A for the Dave Ramsey plan. I'm good. And you know, like I said, things come up. You have to always be, just be ready to take a step That's back. That's why I want you to have that emergency fund. Yeah. Too. My husband needed some dental work. We're doing that. And now we need insulation in our attic because it's so hot out. We had a tree taken out. So, you know, you just take it day by day, take it mm -hmm. slow and yep. don't That'll... get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have the cup of cheddar. We have the cup of, but well, you can, like you said, you could use any. Mm -hmm. This is Monterey and um, This is what they Holy. call it. It's the uh, chilies that. Yeah, they're going to add some good flavor um, to it. I'm just going to use my hands. Yeah, I wondered uh, who came up with that idea. But. Somebody who liked a little kick to You know, their bread. with the internet and Facebook and all that stuff, there's no end to really interesting recipes nowadays. Yes. Okay. Now, okay. Now, if you do, you take it up with a spoon. Sure. Treat it with well, a fork. It's pull for it's pull. I mean, you can pull it apart, but you can right over. Yeah, you know, I pulled apart. Oh, yes, you can. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you just put this in the in the sprayed pan, and you bake it about 25 minutes. Oh my word, that is, is it so good. good. Mm. And you can pull. This is still pretty hot. Oh my, whoever thought of this, congratulations does it have a nice to you. Kick to it? Yes, it does. Yeah. Try one. Oh, I'm good. Mm hmm. That is super easy and super frugal. Yeah. Watch for the and I'm not and for hot sale. stuff, you know that, but the, just that much chili gives it a real kick. That's it. The crew will like this one. I think so. Mm hmm. There you go. There. Whoo! That's a good one. I hope that. Um, you watched what we did, but if not, the information's coming up on your screen. We'll be glad to get it out to you. Um, I cannot imagine anyone not liking this one. So we're just trying to help you out, girls. Stay with me now. I want you to meet my new best friend, Carol Cook. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, please send your request along with a gift of $5 or more to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. I'm joined by uh, Carol Cook and her brand new book. It really has to appeal to women. Bathsheba, Bathed in Grace. I've always been very fascinated with Bathsheba, especially. Um, and glad to have your husband, Jim, in the studio today. Yeah. You uh, live in Arizona, where mm -hmm. I heard this morning on the news it's 115 degrees there. So Florida's I'm, downright chilly. It isn't is. It? <laughs> um, the um, the idea for your book, where exactly did it come from? Because I got kind of got the idea that you got an empty nest, and this was a, somewhat of an answer to that. One day it occurred to me that, as the New Testament says, the older women should teach the younger women. That's exactly and right. I had an epiphany. Mm -hmm. I am an older woman. <laughs> and I started mentoring and teaching young women in my home through Bible studies. Mm -hmm. And I um, wrote about 24 women of the Bible. And I dressed the part and did monologues of them each week in my home. And I saw the impact that it had on these women. Mm -hmm. um, some identified with Hagar, who felt invisible. Mm -hmm. And some felt like Bathsheba, who, or, uh, who was a victim and couldn't move on mm -hmm. with their lives. And some felt like Sarah. I certainly did. Uh, issues of control and running ahead of God. And we mm -hmm. certainly find ourselves yeah, doing and, that. And it's got to be comforting to know that none of them were perfect. They were not perfect. Mm -hmm. And they, like um, Eve, 
was had a flawless life, a flawless figure, and a husband, the <laughs> first and only perfect husband. He had to be perfect. But you know, it wasn't enough. So that we see through all of this, through okay. their struggles, through their heartaches, um, they learned that through God's grace, they were all bathed in His grace and forgiveness that they weren't perfect, but they learned that they were enough. And I think that's what today we must realize rather than looking to uh, People Magazine or what inquiring mm -hmm. minds want to know, we need to look back to the past and let these women rise up off the flat pages of history mm -hmm. and come to life in us. And mm -hmm. we find our stories buried there. Um, as I, I mentioned at the top of the show, I have so much curiosity about those things that are not written. Let's start with some of these. Um, Bathsheba, I've actually heard it preached by a man, of course, of course. <laughs> uh, that, you know, she was kind of looking for a little action because she bathed on the roof. Um, I don't know how in the world that could be substantiated. I. I always thought of her as in a in a time when men were the absolute total leaders of mm -hmm. most things, and then when the king summons you, you 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 do not resist. It's not a is, royal is invitation. It's not a royal invitation. Mm -hmm. It's a command. Uh -huh. And yes, and we know from scripture that she was never um, confronted on the issue of of this being her fault. And mm -hmm. Nathan certainly told David oh, yeah. that uh, he had taken uh, Uriah's little lamb. Mm -hmm. And that tells me that she was innocent and she was doing her, um, the ritual that was assigned to the women by law, her mm -hmm. purifying ritual. And so, and David uh, wasn't supposed to be in town anyway. The kings, it was, it was in the <laughs> springtime, the time when the kings go out to war, mm -hmm. and certainly he should have been there. Mm -hmm. And she was victimized by David, but she didn't stay there. Mm -hmm. She moved, and she's such a testament to women today to, to look at because she made a decision to forgive. And when she did so, she learned to trust David again, and it taught her more about God and forgiveness, and she was able to move on to be the first queen mother of all of Israel. And the, and she lost a child. Lost a child. There's so many women who could really identify with, with that pain besides all the other circumstances <coughs> that she was in. Uh, she undoubtedly knew that David sent her husband to the front line. Do you think she knew that? Well, you know, we're pretty smart. And I think given, <laughs> <She figured it laughs> I think given yes, facts, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> she was probably aware of that. So not only did she She lose, had a lot to forgive. She had a lot of losses mm -hmm. of her hopes and dreams with her husband, Uriah, um, who was a, a strong and excellent man. Oh, what a man. wonderful man and he was. And certainly he could have taken, she didn't have children with him, but he could have taken other wives, had children by them, but he chose only her. What a gift that was to her. Well, he had so much more character than David when you just absolutely look at it. He yeah. refused to <coughs> sleep with his wife when he should have been on mm -hmm. the battlefield, but he he could had have. His priorities also, right. she stepped up to the plate that she wanted her son, Solomon, yes, to follow. Uh, David had a Many sons. Yes, he did. And she had four sons with David mm -hmm. after the one that, that died. And her second son, she named Nathan after the prophet mm -hmm. Nathan because he taught them there in the temple. But certainly David had promised her that Solomon would be king. And so she a few times had reminding him of that fact. And of course, God had that planned all along. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like the, the whole truth of Scripture, Old Testament, New Testament, it flows through these stories with, uh, with David, you know, the wages of sin and, and the price that you pay. And I can only imagine that convicting power when Nathan goes, you're the man. He you know. fell to his knees and mm -hmm. confessed. Mm -hmm. So many times people blame and they won't receive yeah. the the message of truth. Yeah. He's a man after God's own heart. He was. And you know what I love about David is he finished well. Mm -hmm. And so many of us in our lives, we have our secrets of our past, but David repented Keep going. before God mm -hmm. and he finished well. Mm -hmm. uh, in, I'm sure we won't hit all these, but in a nutshell, uh, Sarah, 
It was her idea to bring Hagar into the picture, wasn't it? Well, it was because I believe that she thought she was outsmarting God. Mm -hmm. um, in her story, she only, God only spoke to Abraham. He would come in day after day. Shows the power of a woman, huh? And, <laughs> and, and say, you know, God, Yahweh, God has spoke to, spoken mm -hmm. to me and told me from my seed. And so as he be, got older and older and older, I think the tenderness of her heart too played into this because I think she saw him laying over the altar, begging mm -hmm. God and agonizing, God, give me a son before I'm too old to teach him your ways. And then she thought, maybe it's not from me, it's his seed, maybe it's not to be mm -hmm. from me. Here, I have a young handmaiden. Surely she is, is fertile and can give him a son. So it was a sacrificial kind of gift, yet it was running ahead of God. It also said, and we've always known this, I think everybody knows it, male, female, that women have tremendous influence. And we're born with, this is nothing spiritual, we're born with <laughs> instincts and intuitions and that's why the wise husband listens to his wife because she's wired differently. Doesn't mean that he'll always take her advice or do what she says, but he, he should listen to her. And this is another area where Sarah had that, that influence. Absolutely, and we didn't see Abraham saying, wait, I have to go to the altar and pray about no, this. No, didn't have to twist his arm <laughs> at all. <laughs> Yes, that's that's very and, true. And she endured. He lied about her all the time. He kept saying that uh, she was his sister. So mm -hmm. um, that's why when I get to heaven, I want to know what everybody was thinking on these things. But right. I think you've uncovered it rather well, though. Mm. Well, you know, I think that they're just secrets and they're mm -hmm. jewels hidden in these pages of his story. Mm -hmm. And I used to fear the Old Testament I, because I just thought it's law. And I lived in the grace of the New Testament, just mm -hmm. loving it. So first I wrote about the women of the New Testament. And then I think I heard God speaking to me saying, you're going to have to go write about the women, mm -hmm. your biblical sisters in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And so I did. I was very fearful, and, and I don't know why, but I just thought it's so hard. And as I started reading those stories mm -hmm. about Eve and Sarah and Hagar and all the way down through the Old Testament, their stories just came alive. And I saw the lessons mm -hmm. how women haven't changed much in 6,000 plus years. No, they haven't. We still have issues of jealousy and unforgiveness and and feeling invisible and unrealistic expectations and showing favoritism in our family. Mm -hmm. We just it's still it's continues. still very prevalent. Hagar has always just squeezed my heart. Mm. I've spoken to so many singles meetings, conferences and so forth, and she's a single mom. Mm -hmm. And I once spoke with another lady who had a different outlook that really opened my eyes. She said, what Sarah and Abraham did to that girl is not right. And um, now God gave the okay on it, but when you just look at it from a human standpoint, it just seems cruel that you send a woman and her son out there. But the message for the single mom is, God can bring springs in the desert if he needs to, to take care of you and your child. What I love so much about Hagar is that in my mind, I envision that they didn't call her by her name, that they were slave girl or you or servant girl. Mm -hmm. And so losing her, a bit of her identity, she didn't have her parents there, always been a slave girl. Yet when she was away and ran away in the wilderness, and certainly she had maybe from a distance heard God talking to Abraham at mm -hmm. his altar. She heard her name, mm -hmm. Hagar. Mm -hmm. So hearing that name and, and knowing mm -hmm. that that was the voice of God speaking to her, she gave mm -hmm. him the name El Roy. She was the first one, and as far as I know, the last one, to ever mm -hmm. call him El Roy, the God who sees me and calls oh, me by name. Oh, that is so rich. And, and the angel. 
Yes, the angel she of the Lord. She had an angel appear to her. Yes. Not everybody That's right. has that privilege. And it was the, the angel of the Lord. So, yeah. so that, obviously, and the angel told her that she had to go back. Mm -hmm. And so all the way back, she's rehearsing, in my mind, mm -hmm. what she's going to say, how repentant mm -hmm. she's going to be. And she's going to own her sin, and she's going to own what she did. And then mm -hmm. I believe that Sarah forgave her. But many times we don't want to confess mm -hmm. our mistake. You know, she got pride and, and she thought that Abraham would defend her and she was going to be the number yeah. one wife. But she learned a lesson there. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. I want to move on to Rebecca because she's a real piece of work. Um, she showed favoritism. Mm -hmm. Incredible liar that what she went through to disguise uh, yes. the youngest son and all, yes. what, what was she thinking? You know, it's interesting because uh, I believe as parents and as grandparents, if you have more than one child, if you have more than one grandchild, at some time in your life you're going to be accused of showing mm -hmm. favoritism. Mm -hmm. And hopefully there's not enough evidence there to surmount a, th a case against we you. We have evidence. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> and someday we're going to have to mm -hmm. ask her, why'd mm -hmm. you do it? Mm -hmm. But uh, it's so true that that in her mind, because she had um, a prophecy from the Lord when she was pregnant mm -hmm. that she was going to have twins. Mm -hmm. And these would have been the first twins in the history of, of the Bible. And certainly um, that would sort of shock her. But, mm -hmm. but in that prophecy telling her that the younger one would mm -hmm. rule the older one. I think like Sarah, she's just helping God along. Yeah, she was going to make sure make it happened. Make sure mm -hmm. that, that, that she fulfills, helps fulfill God's mm -hmm. prophecy there. And how many times do we not wait for God? If a door closes, we're trying to climb mm -hmm. through a window instead of being still and waiting on God. Well, wouldn't it be interesting if you could really know how things would have fallen into place if you let God do it? Yeah, tough lesson, but yeah. so true. All right, you know one I love is Leah. Mm. And did you figure out toward the end that maybe Jacob realized she was the better deal? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think I have more questions about this story than any of them. Uh -huh. And at first I wanted to title her story, Why'd You Do It, Leah? Mm -hmm because I can think of a lot of reasons not to, and certainly her father would have, she would have to do what he said, but mm -hmm. I wondered if she cried out and said. Yeah, you think she put up a, any kind of a barrier? I say, just I don't wonder. Want to do that. I yeah. think when I get to heaven, uh, I'm going to ask her, why'd you do it? Maybe it was a one-upmanship on her pretty Perhaps. sister. Perhaps. Always living in her shadow, and, and certainly uh, Jacob must have been handsome to look at mm -hmm. and and by law she was uh, supposed to marry first and yeah and uh, she endured years and years of the favoritism of mm -hmm. Rachel the second wife the pretty one the one he always loved yes. that was his the love From of his life and yet Rachel was the one who hid the idols and I believe he was buried with Leah Yes, we know that Rachel was buried in Bethlehem because mm -hmm. she died giving birth to her second mm -hmm. son, her younger son, Benjamin. And so it shows us um, what bitterness does because I don't believe she forgave Leah or maybe at the end mm -hmm. she did as I wrote in the story, mm -hmm. but also unable to forgive herself, her mother for her part in it, her father for his part, and Jacob for not knowing Mm -hmm. It wasn't her. So when we live a life that's bound up by bitterness, mm -hmm. I think Scripture teaches us it will cut our life short. Oh, indeed, yes. Mm -hmm. um, Consequences. Also, the, when you factor in the customs of that day, it's so far removed from women's opportunities today, it, that has to be factored in. Now. Do you call Eve the perfect? Yes. I thought Eve was, uh, was born perfect in perfection. Everything around her was Well, she was, was created. She was created. Mm -hmm. So she wasn't birthed. Mm -hmm. She didn't have a belly button. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and she didn't have a mother because God the Father created her. So every lesson she had to learn as the first, mm -hmm. all these different seasons of a woman's life, she experienced in first ascent, first homeless woman the first to be um, you know, a mother. The Did first you ever wonder <laughs> what she was thinking when she had labor pains? 
There was no books. <laughs> well, I do believe that. Whoa! I do believe that she remembered when God said to her when mm -hmm. she was banned from oh, the garden, yes. mm -hmm. in birth, you know, in childbirth, you'll bring forth your children in mm -hmm. pain. And so I had always thought of Eve in the garden. Mm -hmm. I hadn't given much thought to her life after the fall, after she was homeless and, and left the garden. and But I believe that her relationship with God the Father, her Creator, was much better after she sinned than it ever was before, because she was first to be forgiven. Mm -hmm. She had it, she had perfect, she had everything, all you women who want everything. Uh, yeah, it wasn't First enough. woman had that. Yes. And uh, yet, that's the story that I'd like to see a real movie. Maybe God made a video <laughs> of that somewhere. Uh, when they leave leave the garden, the garden into the just the great unknown, and yet the wilderness. He he was with them. He was he with, with them. them all the way. Yes, and she knew that she wasn't forsaken, even though they were banned from the garden. But God was still with them, and they experienced His love and forgiveness. Do you think women are? A little more gullible, and that the serpent went after her. Well, I do think that we open doors. We're, yeah, we're different. Let's and face we it. want what's happening now, and the newest, and mm -hmm. the latest, mm -hmm. and the greatest. And and Satan was certainly the serpent uh, tempting mm -hmm. her and saying, "There's more." Mm -hmm. And what's every woman going to say when she hears those words? Oh, where? <laughs> How much does this cost? <laughs> where? <laughs> How long is that store open? But perhaps we are a little more gullible in that respect mm -hmm. that we think we're not enough. Mm -hmm. And so maybe something else will make us. I'm telling more. you, there's so many good lessons. <laughs> you girls have to get this book. And we've had the website up for quite a while. You can get it there, Barnes and Noble and uh, Amazon, Amazon, all and those. From my website. Hope you'll, I hope you'll uh, take advantage of it and really um, get into it in more detail than we could. And let me remind you again, if you would like this Bible Facts Made Easy, this is a fabulous little thing. The address is on your screen. You must write for it. And any offering at all you can send, you have no idea how much we will appreciate it. And I think this is something that really can enrich your Christian life. And, and you don't have to go looking for the facts. They're all together here with scripture references and something to really help you just uh, walk better and more deeply with the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're out of time. Thanks again, Carol. This is really Thank interesting you. stuff. Thank you so much. Uh, but we are out of time, so join me next time. Remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you would like a video copy of today's Homekeepers program for just $19.95, call 1-800-229-0059 for credit card orders or send a gift of at least $19.95 to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida 33758. Be sure to note the program number which appears on your screen.